Hey everyone, I'm back with another video about cloud gaming services. This time I'm gaming and streaming Shadow Warrior 2 over GeForce Now on the same sub $200 PC as before. Check out my previous video regarding this if you haven't already. The PC I'm using is an Odroid H2, which has the quad-core Intel Celeron J4105 with the integrated Intel HD 600 IGP. Also, just like before, I'm going to alternate between a local recording that I grabbed with a capture card and a second PC, and the VOD I grabbed straight from Twitch. Later on I will show them side by side so you can see the difference in quality. Unfortunately, they are not an apples to apples comparison because the live stream was 720p at 30fps and the recording is 1080p at 60fps. So the live stream looks less smooth because this video is 60fps. I'm going to try to not repeat myself too much because the experience with GeForce Now as a whole was nearly identical to my experience with Google Stadia in my previous video. But the point is to show you that cloud gaming services like GeForce Now allow you to get a much better gaming experience from whatever low-end hardware you have than you probably think you can. Just manage your expectations, of course. So to recap my last video, this poor little Intel HD 600 IGP wasn't able to push the Twitch stream past 720p 30fps, which, in all honesty, still looks good, even though a lot of people dislike Intel's quick sync technology, but I'm a huge fan of it for low-end streaming. As mentioned before, the live stream video may look choppy to you in this video, but I've included links below to the raw videos and see for yourself that the choppiness is not visible in the live stream and the VOD. As far as the stream quality goes, for a sub $200 PC, this is definitely impressive. You may have noticed the PC resource utilization in the top left of the live stream video. I had this up during the stream to monitor the resources to see where any bottlenecks were, if any. The CPU stayed around 53% utilization, with some rare spikes above 60%, and the GPU stayed around 90%, with some spikes up to 93%. This is in stark contrast to the Google Stadia, which basically stayed above 90% for the CPU and nearly 100% for the GPU the majority of the time. Again, the gaming and streaming experience were not impacted at all by this, but with GeForce Now you have some headroom to add sources to OBS such as overlays, a webcam, or other cosmetic improvements. RAM usage was minimal at less than 4 gigabytes, which is impressive for Windows 10 by itself. Running that low with OBS and GeForce Now were just icing on the cake in my opinion. Network usage was nearly identical to Google Stadia at around 30 megabits per second down and 7 megabits per second up for the stream. As you can see now, we have both the live stream and the local recording side by side. They both look pretty good in my opinion, but if you disagree, then check out the raw videos in the description before you write them off. YouTube's compression isn't very favorable for comparisons like this, but I hope you get the idea that not only is this a viable option for streamers, but it's not going to scare away the viewers either. The gaming experience with GeForce Now is much closer to gaming locally on PC than Google Stadia is. After spending more time with both, the controls on Google Stadia just don't compare to GeForce Now, which has more true feeling to it with a smoother experience. I don't notice any input lag for either, it's just that Google Stadia feels more like I'm using a controller even when I play with mouse and keyboard. Speaking of input lag though, in my testing GeForce Now was slower than Google Stadia, but it still felt great so if that's your concern then just don't play any competitive ranked matches and you'll be fine. One downside I did experience with GeForce Now is that games did take a while to load for me. If you go watch the VOD, you can see some of the loading times which Google Stadia had none. But, to be honest, I'd take loading times over a limited game library any day of the week. One thing that might be a deal breaker though was the wait times to get into a game. I ended up purchasing the Founder Membership Plan for $4.99 a month just so I can get into a game whenever I wanted to. Otherwise, I was looking at long wait times which is not ideal for streaming at all. Now you could just kick off the game and wait for it to start before going live, but not everybody has a schedule that flexible. For $4.99 a month, it's still cheaper than Google Stadia, but you don't get any free games with it, so the value might not be the same for you. I probably could have picked a more demanding game than Shadow Warrior 2, but I really enjoy it, which is the whole point of gaming, so that's why I used it for my example. Keep in mind, though, that I was playing at max settings at 1080p, and my FPS never dropped below 80. So what's my final verdict? GeForce Now has really grown on me since the comparison video I did of Destiny 2 on PC, Google Stadia, and GeForce Now but throwing streaming into the mix has really boosted my opinion of it. All of the issues I have with it can easily be negated when you stream it. Long wait times? Spend $5 for the paid plan and hop to the front of the line. Long load times after the game starts? Chat with your viewers. Playing a game that's very sensitive to input lag? Just play something else while that game downloads in the background. 
if you have the bandwidth, of course. Overall, it's a really good service. It does mostly everything right and very little wrong. The problem is that Stadia's convenience factor is the only thing that keeps me from opening up GeForce Now. If I want a quick gaming fix, I can open up a browser or turn on my TV and be gaming in seconds. Literally seconds. If I want to play a game that's not on Stadia, I just boot up my gaming PC and play it locally. But that's mainly because I do have a gaming PC. If I didn't have a gaming PC, then hands down, I'd be using GeForce Now every single day without a doubt. And that's the whole point of this video. If you have an old family PC without a discrete video card, or a work laptop that excels at Excel, but not a gaming piece, or if you're not at home so you can't use your gaming PC, then GeForce Now is a much cheaper option than buying a $700 gaming PC or laptop without much of a difference in the experience. Is GeForce Now perfect? No. Is it perfect enough? I think so. Check out the descriptions below for all the links to the raw videos if you're interested in doing your own comparisons. Thanks for watching. Peace out.